Um, so next, I'm super excited to, to invite Lynette Creamer up. Um, so Lynette's testing career began uh, at Adobe, where she spent 10 years. Um, and now she's at the Omni Group as a software test pilot. Hello, I'm Lynette Creamer. I flew in from Seattle today, and uh, I want to tell you about small agile projects. You'll notice this is a picture of space, but it's inside the eye of a needle. And it's a work of art by a specific person. And I'm going to tell you about how that artist works small and how we can use it in testing to manage multiple small projects. I've done a lot of different agile testing. I started out doing testing across the Adobe Creative Suite products when we first acquired new products from doing desktop publishing testing in the past. So I've been testing a really long time. You can find me on LinkedIn, and it has my whole history there. But I want to tell you like, what I mean by small, how to think about small projects as change, and specifically, I'm going to talk about projects that are three to nine months as the largest ones, nine to 12 weeks, five to eight weeks, two to four weeks, and under two weeks. And I've worked on projects of those lengths, and we've actually shipped them, believe it or not. Small means different things to different companies. This is the largest horse and the smallest horse. You'll notice one is way taller than a human being. The other is as small as a medium-sized dog. They're both horses. So what's small to your company may not be small to another company especially if you're in a regulated industry, you work in medical devices, that kind of thing. When it comes to managing a smaller project and trying to do things fast, a much smaller project is easier to test than a slightly smaller project. The reason why is if you have an extremely small project, everyone's on board. They know it's not going to be done like it was always done before. Everyone is clear it's not possible. When it's slightly smaller, you have a denial problem. People think they can have everything they had before and just do a little bit more. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so there's a joke. What does a snail say when riding on a turtle? It says, "Wee!" <laughs> People always want to go faster. They say, oh, we're going to use Agile. We're going to go faster. Our developers are going to do more. Our testers are going to be automated. We're going to be so fast. Faster than what? Faster than ever before. And then the turtle's down here going, this sucks. I'm supposed to do all this work, and now I've got a giant snail on my back, and I'm slimy. This is not good. So that's not how you want to do smaller. So how do we go faster? Do we have sharks with freaking laser beams, and giant bazookas? Like, how can we go fast? I think part of how we go faster is tools. And part of how we go faster is insanity. So part of that is considering how sane is sane enough? How insane are we willing to be? Like how much risk is not going to be too much risk? Um, specifically, when I started working on small projects, I was the first tester at a company of 17 developers. And I started there. And I said, well, I want to start testing. How do I get a build? And the guy said, oh, we just email our builds to our customer. I said, you what? I'd never heard of this. And, uh, so there were no builds. I learned how to roll my own builds. But I realized, you know, we can't be emailing builds to people. It's crazy. So we ended up getting Jenkins together. And you would never believe the weird things I did on these projects. So as a tester, I made some automated tests. I literally set up our build cron job and that kind of thing. Like just weird things I would have to figure it out because there was nobody there. Who else did it? And the reason why is you alone cannot be the single point of progress. With testing, with builds, with approving things, with shipping things, one person can't be the gatekeeper because you could be sick. You could take a vacation one day. It's possible, I promise. And Jenkins, for us, was not just a build tool. It told us when something went wrong quicker. And it told us when our tests weren't passing, why, possibly, or at least sooner, we could figure out why. So to go faster, 
remember to kiss. And that means keep it simple squirrels. So nobody's stupid. We're trying to do a lot of things that are new often. And when we do new things, it's important to start simply. And that means we don't put in a new Jenkins build system and add thousands of automated tests and like seven tools at once. Just try doing one at a time, one at a time until it's working and then build on it. Because otherwise it's really frustrating and I know it may seem faster to do everything at once, but I have found the opposite, that it really helps to get something working and stable and then build on it. So products that are nine to 12 weeks that I've worked on have been something that already exists, but we're gonna tweak it. And what we've been able to do with those projects to keep them small, to think about what we need to do to be prepared when the code's delivered, because you don't have any time to not hit the ground running. So that means we have an outline, like a mind map of what we're gonna test. And we maybe have our test automation framework set up and we maybe have our most important priorities known before the code's delivered because we have to start testing as soon as it comes out. And we also have to know like what are the three most important things we're testing for? Um, what are the priorities so we don't get distracted? The thing about five to eight weeks that's really difficult, the projects that are five to eight weeks almost never were on time. And this is why. You think you have more time than you do. You start out just like this, it seems very small. Before you know it, well, we have two months. It's not that bad. And it's just out of scope so quickly. So I would say five to eight weeks, keeping things optional is important. And saying, well, what's our next priority? Yeah, if we get there, we'll do it. But you know, have to be really a stickler and brutal about it not growing too much. Two to four weeks is for the tiniest of scopes. You can tweak an API, you can add one new thing, you can add a few features, but you're not gonna get much done in the span of a month and have it ship from my experience. Now, they've shipped browser stack in two days. They're super long project of mobile. I don't know, did they get it done in four weeks? It doesn't sound exactly like it, but apparently they've been doing this a lot. And back when I was first learning it, two to four weeks was a really short project. Uh, we didn't get a lot of automation done in two to four weeks until we'd already shipped it. So basically we're automating behind ourselves except for a few sanity checks in our Jenkins pipeline. Under two weeks, I want you to look at what this is. We shipped a couple things under two weeks. They were all magic. This is not a cake. This is an Oreo with whipped cream on it. So if you wanna do something in smaller than two weeks, you're gonna have to be very precise and it may harm you. Now this is the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin. The man it, made it in prison, he had lots of time, but he also went blind doing it. So don't make yourself blind by trying to work too fast, too hard. These are some really cool artwork. There's a competition of people, they take a pencil, and all they're doing is creating art, but if you disturb the lead at all, you're done, you have to start over. I would say that's very true for projects under two weeks. You are being extremely painstaking about what you're not gonna test, and the core better stay stable, or you're not gonna make it on time. All project mantra. You have to trust your team in order to take the risks or you cannot possibly test and ship something on time. What do you do when you have lots of small projects? So these are Cheerios and they are decorated Cheerios in a pill box, but don't they look like tiny donuts? That reminds me of a project I work on. It was a plugin and we wrapped someone else's API with a custom UI. And all we did is take two other pieces of existing code and made them look great. And guess what? We tested the UI, we tested a few things, and out it went. It was Cheerios with some powdered sugar on it. It wasn't new, but it was useful. And that's the important thing. So I'll cats in this tree here. And I have a thing about cats, like I love to share cats on the internet, and I have, there's a lot of cats in the tree, and that's like quite a few cats. 
So when you're working on multiple projects, there were two times, like three months into this job, six months into this job, I was their first tester, there were 17 developers, we had like seven to nine projects going on at once. And this was me, I was just like, I, I can't take it anymore. I am overwhelmed, I feel like I can't be strategic, all I'm ever doing is ping-ponging back issues to people, and it sucks. So what are you gonna do? I found a few things helped me. One of them is called a survival schedule. What is a survival schedule? I set up a schedule where I worked on one project before lunch and another project after lunch, and I just published the schedule. So everyone knew what I was testing on. And you could bump someone's project, but then you lost your next spot. So I got few, very few emergencies, because you knew you lost your next spot if you bumped someone else's project. And what happened is the developers would have their new code ready and we would pair for an hour when they checked it in before it even went to Jenkins. We would pair in their development environment and I would be testing with them and we would turn around like about seven to 17 bug fixes in one hour over chat. I really recommend this. If you're short on testing time, pair with each other. Don't write up bug reports. That takes so much time. Just don't do it. Just fix them. Fix the problems. Don't spend that time writing. Customers don't get a bug report, they don't care. They just wanna see the product work right and they wanna see it in a time where it's useful to them. So small projects are fun. I went from feeling like that angry snowman to being like this cat, occasional brain freeze, but enjoying the rainbow of variety in testing different projects and different customers and different, one of the projects we worked on was photo books for a large company and it was really cool to see how much faster their product got when we put new technology in. It was really fun to see what people were building. And I like to say PMS is an obstacle to testing quickly and for small projects. So that's uh, like posturing, dealing with internal politics, having to worry about how people perceive you and taking things offensively, uh, micromanaging, being stuck in meetings, people chasing the green bar of metrics. Oh yeah, we need to have 100% code coverage, whatever. It's stupid, it's it just wasteful. And then there's the whole status like, oh, you had better respect my authority, being silent because you're afraid to bring up a bug or you're afraid to bring up a customer issue. All these things waste time. And so definitely those things, you may be able to get something shipped with them, but it's gonna be painful and it's gonna be slower. So all of those things, if you can deal with them sooner, you're gonna go faster and you're gonna have more fun. So I wanted to talk about this artwork. That's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in the head of a needle. That's Elvis Presley on the head of a sewing pin. And that's a little hamster holding on. So <laughs> the reason why I wanted to include this artwork is the gentleman who made these sculpts by hand and he learned to meditate and he learned to slow down through biofeedback, his breathing and heart rate. But in order to do that, the first set of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves he created, he inhaled them. He regularly destroys his artwork by sneezing. So if there's allergies, it's really devastating. If you're gonna do small things, sometimes they have to be allowed to fail. And I think the secret to getting used to it is to hold on through the winter. <laughs> Just don't. Don't give up, keep trying, because it, it gets easier to do the small things. And one thing that helped me was just thinking, okay, today was hard and I felt overwhelmed. What can I do tomorrow that is gonna help it be less stressful? And that's how we started pairing when the code was handed off. That's how we got our Jenkins CI system going. Um, I, I wrote some production code, believe it or not. At that time, I hadn't done much. I wrote a um, preview generation code for a customer. And I just wrote pseudocode and then I ended up writing code and then another developer reviewed it and got it checked in. It was my first production code. So from 2011 to 2015, I worked on these small projects. I've been working on bigger projects since then. But I still try and think when I'm overwhelmed, what can I do today? There's this idea of nothing that's really important in technology and in our industry. Like the difference between what null is and what zero is, is relevant. 
Remember the freedom of nothing in testing. If you weren't there, what testing would be done? So if you feel like my testing is inadequate in the situation, I can't cover everything, that's really frustrating. There was literally no tester before I worked there. And I just thought, am I worse than nothing? No, I'm doing way more than nothing. So that was uplifting to me. And the freedom of nothing means anything you do can be an improvement. And that's, I think, how we got better fast, was realizing we need builds, we have nothing. We're literally emailing customers. Like having nothing is all the freedom you need to grow. If you have something, you have a precedent. If you're starting out clean, that's kind of a gift that you can enjoy. And I think that a lot of people in innovative companies are faced with having nothing. And it's daunting, but it's also freeing. So um, my slides have some references because um, there's the artwork. And then there's also some data about the different horses, if you're interested in horses. But then someone asked me how many animals I had, so I had to include some slide analytics for those who really care about like what the cats are and uh, you know how many different animals. And that's all I have. So thanks for uh, hearing about the Small Agile Projects. <laughs>